this protocol, we describe the fabrication and installment of tetrodes, bundles of four electrodes for chronic in vivo recording in the awake rodent. To begin tetrode fabrication, a strand of microelectrode wire is folded twice upon itself to make a bundle of four parallel wires. These wires are then twisted together and fused with a hot air gun. Each finished tetrode is placed in a storage box while more tetrodes are made. Each tetrode is inserted down a dedicated pathway, entering through an opening in a linear actuator and exiting through the base of the microdrive array. Each of the four wires of the tetrode are connected to separate pins on an output connector board affixed to the top of the microdrive array. The impedance of each channel of the tetrode is lowered using a gold electroplating process. Once all the tetrodes have been installed and electroplated, two ground wires are attached to the respective pins on the connector board and a protective cone is affixed to the frame of the microdrive array for protection. After the cone has been grounded, a fully functioning tetrode microdrive array is ready for implantation. Hi, I'm Dave Nguyen from the laboratory of Nat Wilson in the Pickout Institute for Learning and Memory at MIT. Today we will show you a procedure for fabricating tetrodes, loading tetrodes, and completing the final stages of the microdrive array construction. We use this procedure in our laboratory to study coordinated neural activity between large populations of neurons in an awake behaving animal preparation. So let's get started. To build the tetrode for our standard microdrive array, we begin with a 50 centimeter length of insulated 12 micron nichrome wire. Fold the wire in half. Run your fingers along the pair to make them stick together. Make sure the pair of wires have good contact throughout their entire length. Fold the pair again by holding the two ends together. Make sure that the loop formed on one end is not kinked. Cut the four wires on the non-looped end so that the four tips are aligned. For the next step, you will need a modified alligator clip, a motorized turning device, and a horizontal bar above the turning device. The alligator clip is modified by gluing a plastic bar to the base of the clip. When the tips are exposed, clamp the four wires together with the modified alligator clip. Hang the loop of wire over the horizontal bar. Place the alligator clip into the motorized stage. Apply 80 clockwise twists, followed by 40 counterclockwise twists to the wire bundle over the course of approximately three minutes. These parameters can be varied according to your needs. After tetro twisting is completed, fuse the wires together by heating from three different angles with a heat gun using medium to low flow. For each angle, begin one to two centimeters below where the wire bundle splits then run the heat gun down and up at a two centimeter distance from the wires for about five seconds. Use caution as high temperatures will completely melt the insulation and lead to short circuits. Now that the wires have fused together, remove the tetrode from the twisting apparatus by gently lifting the alligator clip to relieve tension on the tetrode and cut the tetrode near the alligator clip. At the other end, cut the loop such that there are four non-bonded strands of wire of equal length. Next, separate the individual strands at the top by gently bending the wires with a soft-tipped pair of tweezers. The tetrode is now ready for loading into the microdrive array. Make 21 to 25 more tetrodes and store them in a dust-free box until it is time for the tetrode loading process. To proceed, you will need a complete microdrive array. If you have not yet built one, refer to the video Microelectro Drive Array for Chronic In Vivo Recording, Microdrive Array Fabrication. In our design plan, the tetrode will be attached at one end to connector hardware and will run through the polyamid carrier tube in the microdrive such that the electrode tips extend below the base of the microdrive array. We will now demonstrate this loading process for one tetrode. Before beginning, Build the drive holder that can be attached to the connector board on one end and on the other end can be clamped by a panna vise. In this example, the drive holder is a Milmax connector glued to one end of an X-Acto knife handle. Holding the tetrode with soft tip tweezers and using a stereoscope, push the tip of the tetrode into the polyamid carrier tube of one of the microdrives. 
Push the tetrode into the tube until the individual electrode wires are close to the connector board at the top of the drive array. Be careful not to kink or bend the wires as this will cause the tetrode to enter the brain at an angle rather than perpendicular and will weaken the integrity of the tetrode. Now, gently feed the other end of the four wires into their respective holes in the electrode interface board using soft tip tweezers. Again, avoid kinking or bending the wires. With all four wires in place, push the gold pins into their holes with a pair of pliers that have a shortened lower jaw. When the pins are pushed into the hole, they will strip the wire insulation and create an electrical connection. For later reference, keep track of the mapping between microdrives and pin position on the electrode interface board. Continue loading a total of 18 tetrodes. The three remaining microdrives on the array will be used to house the reference electrodes. Each reference electrode is made of a tetrode that uses only one of the four unbonded wire ends. To attach the reference electrodes, follow the loading procedure but attach only one of the four electrodes to the respective reference electrode pin on the connector board. If you are planning multi-site recordings, it may be worthwhile to plan out the connections from the tetrodes to the connector board ahead of time. For example, cluster tetrodes that are targeted to one anatomical region together on the electrode interface board. This should minimize the possibility of adjusting the wrong tetrode during experiments. Once tetrode loading is completed, make two ground wires, one for the animal and one for the protective cone. Cut one 6-inch long insulated steel wire and remove 3 millimeters of insulation using metal tweezers from each end of the wire. Then cut a 4-inch long insulated steel wire. Remove 3 millimeters of insulation at one end and 1 centimeter at the other end. Route the 6-inch ground wire through the hole on the side of the microdrive array and up towards the interface board. Connect the exposed wire to the electrode interface board with a gold pin at the designated ground hole. This wire will connect to the animal's skull. Route the 4-inch ground wire parallel to the previously installed ground wire. Connect the 3mm stripped end to the electrode interface board using a gold pin at another designated ground hole. This wire will later be connected to a protective cone, which will act as a small Faraday cage to reduce noise pickup. We are now finished connecting wires and can proceed with refining our tetrodes. Our goal in this process is to cut all the tetrodes so that they are slightly longer than the depth of the target brain structure. In our example, the microdrives are designed for a maximum travel of 5 to 6 millimeters, sufficient to reach many neocortical areas and the dorsal hippocampus of an adult rat. First, lower all the microdrives so that the tetrodes are maximally exposed. Simultaneously cut all the tetrodes to lengths that are approximately 5 millimeters longer than the desired final length using a pair of sharp fine scissors. For the final cut, Prepare a pair of serrated scissors in a pan of ice. Clamp one handle with a slight angle downwards and with serrations facing upwards, while leaving the other handle dangling. Now completely withdraw all the tetrodes into their guide cannulae by turning the microdrives up. Using a stereoscope, fully extend one tetrode out from its cannula. Using a ruler, position the serrated scissors at the desired distance from the guide cannulae. Slowly and gently cut the tetrode with one smooth movement. After this tetrode has been cut, withdraw the microdrive up by 3 to 4 millimeters. Repeat this process for each tetrode until all have been cut. At this point, you are ready for gold plating. Gold plating the nichrome tetrodes is critical for long-term stable recordings. It prevents corrosion and improves biocompatibility. Set up the impedance meter in external mode in the current generator and DC check mode with audio output. Touch the two leads of the current generator to the six possible pairs of channels within each tetrode and use the audio feedback to determine if shorts exist between pairs. A short between channel pairs sounds like this. If a short exists, recut the tetrode with serrated scissors and test again. If the problem persists, discard the tetrode and replace it. Move all the microdrives down, extending all the tetrodes as far out as possible. Modify the equipment configuration for checking electrode impedance. Now dip the tips of all the tetrodes into a bath of standard gold plating solution. 
The gold bath is electrically connected to the negative lead of the impedance meter. Check the impedance of the electrode by touching the positive lead of the impedance meter to the corresponding pin on the connector board. Measure and record the impedance of every wire on the microdrive array. Normal values range from 1 to 3 mega ohms. On the current generator, set the current between 1 to 3 microamps. Next, securely attach the positive lead of the impedance meter to the pin on the connector board. On the impedance meter, quickly switch from normal mode to bypass mode and back. While in bypass mode, current will pass through the tetrode and gold solution and gold will be plated onto the electrode tip. The impedance after each round of plating should be less than before. Repeat the current pulse if the impedance did not drop below 1 mega ohm. A conservative range of acceptable impedances are 250 kilo ohms to 350 kilo ohms. If the impedance drops below 200 kilo ohms, this may indicate a short circuit. If after repeated pulses the impedance does not drop sufficiently, the electrode tip may be obstructed. Recut the tetrode, check for shorts, and repeat the gold plating process. If recutting doesn't help, replace the tetrode and start again. After plating all tetrodes, dip them in ethanol and let them dry for 3 to 5 minutes. Test for short circuits within tetrodes using the current generator with the tetrode tips exposed to air. If a DC connection exists between two or more electrodes of a tetrode, recut the tetrode and plate with gold again. After gold plating of all the tetrodes is complete, move all the tetrodes into the drive. As a final step, at the top of each microdrive, add a drop of medium thickness cyanoacrylate glue to the interface between each tetrode and its polyamide tubing. This will secure the tetrode to its microdrive. The protective cone's purpose is to shield microdrives and the exposed tetrode wire from the environment. It also provides support for handling during an experiment and reduces electrical noise. We use a 3D printed plastic cone. However, it is possible to make the cone from other materials like a bent piece of soda can. Take the plastic cone and fix some aluminum foil tape to the inner or outer surface. First, insert and partially turn three 172 size screws, 3 16 inches in length, into the sides of the cone. With the drive array suspended, insert the cone over the drive. Make sure both ground wires extend from the bottom of the drive array. Wrap the exposed part of the 4-inch ground wire around one of the 172 screws several times and fasten the screw tightly. Secure the cone to the drive base by tightening the remaining two cone screws. Microdrive array production is now complete. Your microdrive array is loaded with 18 tetrodes and three references. It is encased in a protective cone and cap for durability. The finished drive usually weighs 20 to 25 grams on average. The finished drive array is implanted using standard surgical procedure. As you can see, the drive is attached to a preamplifier chip and a bundle of wires that carry the signal to data acquisition hardware and software. We have just shown you how to make tetrodes and complete the micro drive array construction procedure. In this video, we showed you how to fabricate tetrodes load and condition the tetrodes for in vivo recording. In addition, we showed you how to add a cone to the microdrive array to make it robust over time. There are many steps in the microdrive array construction, so be patient, be gentle with the electrodes, and make sure all the intermediate steps are properly completed. Thank you for watching and good luck with your experiments.